XKCD released a comic today about how the passwords that we've been trained to pick are not as secure as passwords that we might pick if we went based on what was easier to remember but very long as opposed to something that was supposed to be easier to remember like using a uncommon word with a bit of leet speak or you know random characters inserted into it. XKCD is right about the math of brute forcing through these passwords, but the truth is usually if your password gets compromised it's because you entered it into a site that was storing the password either in clear text or even if they encrypted it, they didn't, they didn't hash the password. And what's meant by hash is instead of using the password itself, you apply a mathematical algorithm to it that then takes that password and makes it something else. And you can't actually translate between that math and the original password. You simply have a derivative. So I created a simple patch in order to demonstrate this. So let's say our password was PASS, capital P A S dollar sign. We would translate that to the ASCII characters 80, 97, 115, and 36. So in our very simple hash, what we're going to do is say that all passwords are going to be stored as a number, 029999. So what we would do is take the reciprocal of the sum of those bits, which would be 328, so 1 divided by 328, and then we take the first four significant digits, which would leave us 3048. Other passwords might also have the numbers and uh, the hash of 3048. This provides a fixed amount of security. We would always know that there were 10,000 possible combinations and that if we only allowed people to guess wrong 10 times a day, that they would have a one in a thousand chance of guessing the password in any given day and we could lock the system down. Now obviously 10,000 isn't a large enough number for real security but usually you're using you know SHA-128 which is a 128-bit password or 512 and so the number of possible combinations would be very very large but the hosting provider would never actually have stored the password. So even if they got hacked, no one could go back to your password. Now, if everyone uses the same algorithm, all you have to do is brute force through all of those hashes so that you can build a translation table to something that would work. But a good system uses what's called salting the hash. So when you do a WordPress install, for example, you're supposed to set the salt in the config file. And that salt is a set of characters that gets added to the password every time you run the hash. This makes it so that you can no longer translate between the password table from one site to the password table on another site. Those hashes will all be different. So cat may yield one, two, three, four on one server, and because of the salt on a different server, cat ends up being 1792, and they don't match. So you can't instantly just say, hey, every place that this person has used the word, you know, go Vikings as a password, that we can find them. So this is the reason I get very upset when companies say, hey, we were hacked and 10,000 users' passwords got put into the wild. Why were they storing the password? You don't need to store the password. You should be storing a hash. You can do everything you need to do with a hash. It's more secure. It's more scalable. It's easier to make sure that your users are safe. There's basically no downside to using hashes with the possible exception that your database is larger because instead of storing six characters, you're storing 128 bits for the for the encryption or the hash. So it really frustrates me when someone says, hey, we hacked Amazon and 10,000 passwords got out to the wild, or we hacked Sony and 100,000 users' passwords 
got put into the wild. It should never happen.